Welcome, welcome, welcome. This is our Summer Camp 2022 seminar. My name is Mike Asri. This is Nick Kraus. Oh, I'm sorry. I should let you introduce yourself. Go ahead. My name's Nick. Thank you. Thank you for joining us today. And we're going to be talking about our favorite modifications. So this is going to cover a few different categories. We're going to try to keep it relatively broad. So to start off with, Nick, let's talk about our favorite power modifications, because that's what really everybody wants, right, is more power. So when it comes to power, what kind of things do you think are really meaningful or worthwhile to add to a Miata? And let's keep it across, or at least touch on a few different subjects for different Miatas. That way everybody with the different generations can be involved. Uh, so I think most of us can probably uh, sympathize with wanting a little bit louder of an exhaust on our, on our, our favorite car to drive around. Uh, it always helps. Uh, the enjoyment of the driving experience, having a little bit more of a throaty exhaust note. Uh, so that's definitely one of the first modifications I do to any of my cars, not just my Miata, um, when, I, when I get a hold of it. Um, so along those lines, uh, cat back, mid pipe, a header if that's apl applicable. Um, I really, really love the turbo kit on my personal Miata, so that's also kind of my uh, predisposition is to uh, advocate for boost whenever possible because the added power, really intoxicating, it's hard to give up. So those are definitely my first two favorite performance modifications. And fair warning, Nick is also a Subaru guy, so he is that guy that starts up his loud Subaru in the morning to wake you up. So Hey, it has a cat. It's fine. Uh, uh, yeah, okay. So, and you kind of stole mine for power as far as the turbo kits are concerned, because obviously I'm a big advocate for turbo. A little bit of boost goes a long way in a Miata. You don't have to have the highest horsepower car uh, unless you're Caleb. And then you need, you know, 300 plus horsepower, and then maybe you'll DNF every other time at the autocross, right? Yeah. But when it comes to power, it really doesn't take a whole bunch to make a difference. As he said, a full exhaust system, you know, we're not making big horsepower, but most of it does boil down to the sound. So what other power things can you do that are worthwhile in a Miata? It, well, it gets a little trickier with the newer generation cars, but with the older generation cars, the NAs and Bs, you can do little things such as bump your timing. You know, relatively free modifications. If you can increase your ignition timing, you can get a few more horsepower for, well, the cost of premium fuel, basically. So easy, easy, cheap thing to do that anybody with a 10 millimeter wrench or socket can take care of. So nice, easy thing I like to do as long as you have some high octane fuel, 91, 93 available to you. All right, Nick, I'm gonna pass it back over to you. What other power modifications do you like that are worth it? Uh, so I, I'm also a fan of uh, added induction noise. So I really like an open element air filter on any of my cars. Uh, I really like the extra kind of sound that you get in the cabin. Uh, exactly. <laughs> I feel, especially with the turbo kit, it helps kind of add to the whole experience of the added power. It goes right along with the exhaust noise, in my opinion. They both really add to my driving experience, and I really uh, feel that most people can benefit from. It helps kind of add to the sensation of power, uh, even if the, the open air element doesn't necessarily add that much power on its own, but it adds to the driving experience, I think, more than, more than uh, many other mods do. And without spending tons and tons and tons of money on a built engine, I think I'm going to leave it there for power. High compression is cool, don't get me wrong, but boost is the best bang for your buck. If you don't remember anything else today, remember that. So next hot topic, let's move on to suspension. Everybody knows that Miatas are great handling cars. It doesn't take a whole bunch to make them that much better. So bang for the buck, or at least well, let's not even talk about money. Favorite modification. What is your first modification that you'd recommend for a suspension mod on a Miata? Stiffer sway bars, uh, no question. Uh, best bang for your buck upgrade out there. It really helps with the planted feel uh, going through the corners. Uh, no real downside to your ride quality, which is always a big plus, uh, especially if you're lowering your car. You don't want to give any of that up if you can help it. Um, so that's definitely my favorite is the sway bars. I totally agree. I love doing sway bars. They are relatively inexpensive. And I'm sorry, ND owners, you're, you guys, your front sway bar, it sucks to replace, I know. But everybody else, sway bars is a breeze. So, you know, a couple of hours, NAs, NBs, even NCs, the ND guys, I'm so sorry. 
uh, you can thank Mazda for that one. <laughs> My favorite modification for suspension is actually chassis bracing. And we'll talk about that a little bit more, but especially for the older cars, if you have an NA, NB, they're a little bit noodly. And especially if you get in an NC or ND, you're like, oh man, my car, I need to have some bracing to really pull it together. So if I were to do one thing on a Miata NA and B, at least bracing is the best way to do it if you want to improve the way that your chassis is not absorbing the, uh, the bumps and the potholes, but that your suspension is doing its job to absorb those bumps and potholes and actually move in its suspension travel. I guess um, to be more specific for NDs and NCs, this is where you guys get off lucky. So there you go, congrats. So a, a good set of uh, high performance bushings. Uh, so uh, anything that's a little bit stiffer than the factory bushings, uh, if your car is one of the NA and BNCs where it's kind of getting a few miles up there, uh, those rubber bushings, the factory ones, are probably starting to degrade a little bit. And especially if you have an NA or an NB, at this point, if they're still in stock bushings, they're most likely pretty shot. Um, I replaced a couple of control arm bushings on my NB a couple of years ago uh, just because they were loose and I could tell that they were loose. And after doing that control arm, I wound up redoing all the bushings on the front end uh, just because of the difference just those two bushings made was so noticeable that I decided to go ahead and just replace the rest of them. And it felt like a completely different car. It was a big change for not, not that much time, not that much money. Um, big improvements. So if you haven't checked into those in a while, um, especially if you have one of the older generations of car, um, definitely a, a big improvement can be had there. Uh, even if just replacing with the factory rubber uh, ones that aren't stiffer than normal uh, can feel like an upgrade. Uh, kind of brings the car back to life a little bit. Now, one of my favorite cheap or at least relatively inexpensive modifications for suspension that you could do is not even something that you would normally do yourself. Go get an alignment. If you don't have at least a somewhat performance-themed alignment, if you're just going down and telling them, here's my car, align it, you may drive out of there with positive camber. And especially ND owners, you probably left the factory with positive camber among other issues with your alignment. So if you haven't had your car aligned since you picked it up, maybe you got a second hand, maybe you bought a new, that should absolutely be on your list, even if it's not modified elsewise. You know, go spend 70, 80, 90 bucks, whatever it is at your local alignment shop, get it tuned up because it doesn't take much to really transform the feel of the car. And then you find that how, why did Mazda even think this was okay to leave the factory this way? We dropped several seconds off the local track when we did that with our first NBs because we found that they had all kinds of funny issues with positive camber and not, you know, I think they walked out of the factory with like um, toe out in the front or back or something like that that was, you know, really just not ideal for what you want for a very stable but still planted feeling car and we're not even getting crazy with our alignment numbers. So I can't stress this enough, especially if you've got new tires, go get a performance alignment, even if you're just using our specs. And our specs aren't that aggressive. So if you need, well, I'll just leave it there. I'll get off my soapbox. If you have questions about it, you come find me afterwards. Uh, one of the other mods that I did to my NB a couple years ago um, to try to help with bump steer was uh, added the uh, R package tie rod ends. And they made a very big difference for me uh, when I, was, I moved here from Nebraska and the roads out there are crap. <laughs> so uh, I found that the R package tie rod ends really helped um, knock the bump steer way, way down for me. It made the car a lot more enjoyable to drive even on roads that are less than ideal. Uh, and certainly since I was using it as a daily at that time, uh, it made the car a lot more fun to be in. Uh, that in conjunction with the freshening of the bushings uh, made a just feel like a completely different car on the front end. It was, uh, it was a, one of my favorite mods I've done to the car. One more thing that I'll talk about that you probably heard of compensators being horsepower, turbos, V8s, you know. If you want to negate the compensator effect, get good tires. That is an excellent thing you can do for your suspension system because if you get a nice sticky set of 200 treadwear tires, man, you're gonna look like a hero out there as long as you're not doing something really silly. But if you want to king pain and control that horsepower, man, a good set of tires does a world of good for your track times. Yep, the lesser tread life, definitely worth it in my opinion. The sticky tires, even on the street, it, the stickiest tire you're willing to get away with, uh, definitely, it, especially going through roundabouts, uh, on ramps, 
Yeah, and it just helps improve the driving experience on all the little parts of your drive that you might not otherwise take that much joy in. Um, so, and, and kind of following along with kind of freshening up the factory stuff, uh, even if you just put uh, like a stock replacement shock like the Kony STRTs back in your car, if you haven't checked the shocks in a while, uh, it, it's kind of along the same lines where it just starts to get worse and worse over time. You don't quite really notice the decline in ride quality or the responsiveness of the shock. Um, freshening up with a factory style shock or even upgrading to a more performance oriented shock definitely helps bring some of that driving joy back into the car. Um, it'll feel a little bit less rattly and just improve the ride quality everywhere you can. Um, all of that will help add to that driving experience every time you get in the car. All right, well, shall we move on? Let's do another one. Let's talk about something less performance oriented or at least something that's a bit more aesthetically oriented. Let's talk about exterior mods, because I know that there's a lot of people here that maybe they don't even really care about the performance as much. They just want to look cool. Kian, I'm looking at you, buddy. <laughs> He's the guy that's got the, looks like a backwards hat on the, his car. He's cool. Kian's a cool guy. So exterior mods, my biggest thing, and maybe it's just because I'm a little bit more old school, but I think the one thing that changes the look of the car the most is wheels. And this is a very personal thing. A lot of people here, um, especially if you're in the horsepower or performance crowd, get the lightest wheels, get the lightest wheels, and that's good. Miatas do benefit from the lightest wheels. But to me, a really nice set of wheels matched to whatever kind of theme that you're aiming for in the car just transforms it. And if you buy a car that you're like, man, this car looks cool, but those wheels are so ugly, and then you slap a nice set of wheels and tires on them, and you're like, oh, just perfect. You can walk away from the car happy every time. Yeah, this one, the ones you walk away and you're like, that one's mine. Yeah. <laughs> I love wheels. It's, it's definitely my go-to for changing the way the car looks with an easy bolt-on modification. Mm -hmm. Kind of following along with the wheels, uh, changing those, those uh, stock lug nuts, the chrome ones, I think <laughs> nothing kind of ruins the look of a nice new set of wheels like a non-matching set of lug nuts. You know, they don't have to color match, but something to kind of tie it all together definitely helps. Uh, I, I really like the look when you get the nice set of wheels and a good set of lug nuts to kind of tie everything in. Uh, it really kind of ties all the look together perfectly and just a little bit more every time you walk away from the car, being happy to look back and know it's yours. And this is another one of those things that is probably a particular aesthetic choice, but uh, I know a certain media guy uh, social media and advertising guy that he doesn't have a single one of these on his car because he doesn't like them. And that's an antenna delete. If you've ever put a car cover on, if you've ever gone through a car wash, if you've ever just looked at it and thought, man, that looks like an RC car, you might consider an antenna delete. In the world of Bluetooth radios, thank God, you don't actually need an antenna if you don't listen to the radio. So a very simple, easy mod, uh, unless you're Travis and then you have five of them because you want to try out all the different ones on the market, is an antenna delete. Uh, luckily, we do have one if you're interested for NAs and, or NCs and NDs. But even if you don't, just a stubby antenna makes a big difference over the RC car waving kind of antenna that looks like you're a, a dune buggy car off, off in the sand. Or the chrome power antenna like uh, my ND has, also cringe. <laughs> Sorry, Carl. <laughs> uh, I also really like the, the look of a good uh, front lip or a front splitter added on. Uh, it's another, just another little small visual touch that the car just really adds the whole effect of the car, uh, especially, again, when you're walking away or when you're walking up to your car after a day of work, just makes you appreciate the car that much more. So if any of you have watched any of the videos where I got off on a tangent about LED lighting, um, I apologize. I am a lighting nerd. I love LEDs. I don't know why. Something's wrong with me. I admit it. But one of the things I really love about bringing cars into the modern era is using LEDs to make them just, it refreshes them. It makes them look new again. A lot of times, especially for the older cars, you have LED, or, uh, incandescent lights. They've been in there for years. You haven't changed them out. You pop in some nice LEDs. It just transforms the look of the car, especially at night. 
Obviously, it helps with visibility too, or at least being seen. Um, I can attest to not being seen, and I don't like it. It hurts when it doesn't happen. But I digress. LEDs, in my opinion, is a huge, huge benefit if you're looking to update the look of your car, uh, the usability of your car, without really doing anything too crazy. I mean, you're unplugging a bulb. It's easy. So, one of my favorite mods by far. Mm -hmm. Uh, I'll go on a rant about it in a later video, so I'll save you all the hassle now. Another visual mod I, I really like is a, is a, a rear diffuser add-on. Uh, there's a lot of wild ones out there. There's a lot of kind of more mild designs out there. Um, I kind of like them all. I, I can appreciate even the really crazy uh, race-style ones, like the one on, uh, on Matt's Hill Climb car. Looks pretty outrageous, but still looks really cool. I love the way it looks. Uh, I also really love uh, the way some people do the bumper cuts on the rear bumper. I, I think it, just a little bit of variation there kind of shows off the rear suspension pieces a bit, especially if you've got some upgrades done in that area. Um, kind of adds the racy, uh, kind of non-stock look. Yeah, if any of you are familiar with the OMG Miata, he does a really good job of that. The whole underside, because you're like, it's under the car, nobody sees it. But he's got it trimmed away just nicely to show off his polished braces and special powder-coated parts that otherwise wouldn't see the light of day on most people's cars. So if you care that much and you keep it clean or keep it powder-coated, that's a great way to do it. Okay, we talked about exterior stuff enough, probably beat the dead horse a little bit. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, let's move on to interior stuff. Now, this is more about the creature comforts. This is more about the stuff that you interact with every time you go driving. And this stuff, even though it's not as exciting as a turbo or something like that, I think that this is one of those things that you'll probably appreciate a lot just because you use it every time you get in the car. Nick, you start with yours first. Yeah. Uh, one of the things, the first things I touch every time I get in my Miata is the shift knob. Uh, there's plenty of custom shift knobs out there. Uh, there's also some really good factory ones out there. I have, my NB has the, the Nardi steering wheel and shift knob, and the, that polished wood surface is just exactly what I'm looking for when I'm, when I'm driving my car. It's, it really helps add to the experience. There's a couple of cars in the FM fleet here that have a couple of other um, different designs on shift knobs. We have a Delrin knob, there's a stainless steel knob we just started carrying. They all feel really, really good in your hand, and that really helps with a positive shift experience every time you drive the car. Uh, and just one more thing that can add to that driving experience every time you get behind the wheel. Yeah, the, well, again with Mr. Particular up here, we have... I think I'm down to five. Oh, you're down to five? <laughs> yeah. yeah. If you, if you want to try out a shift knob, ask Travis. He probably has what you're looking for, at least to try it out. Yeah, I, I agree. That's a very important item. And I'm a bit of a cheap date, I guess, because I love our Delarin shift knob. It's what, 30 bucks or something? It's, it's silly cheap. And that's my favorite one, even compared to the, uh, uh, what's the, the other awesome billet one that we have? Craven Speed. Craven Thank yep. you, Travis. Of course he knows that. <laughs> yeah, the Craven Speed shift knob, they are awesome. They have a very positive feel, but I'm just, I'm a simple guy. That Delrin shift knob is just, it's great. Fits my hand perfectly. Mm -hmm. I think a good complement to a shift knob is a good steering wheel. And if you haven't tried aftermarket steering wheels, and I'm not talking about the cheap, easy eBay ones that you get that you can literally like bend and fold them and they move around and all that kind of stuff, but a good steering wheel, such as like a Momo or a Nardi. And there are some factory versions of those too, if you like the look of a factory or something like the Cypher steering wheels that we have, something that is a little bit larger grip, something that has a different texture like a perforated leather or a suede, there's a lot of different options out there, and that makes a huge difference to what kind of a feel your car has and what experience you have every time you drive the car, even if you're not racing it. Mm -hmm. Great way to just change what driving experience is without really doing much to affect how the car actually drives. It's just the interface that you have with the vehicle. Yeah, I agree. Definitely any of the surfaces you touch most often in the car, just keep adding more and more touches to the car, more personal touches and more things to be happy about when you hop in your car every time. Um, one, of the, one of my other interior upgrades that I really like is the billet top latch locks to replace those uh, terrible factory ones. Um, really good quality of life upgrade. I didn't know how much I needed them until I installed a set in my car. Uh, and it's really nice knowing that when I close the soft top, it's not gonna come loose again. Yeah, NA and NB owners, 
<laughs> if you have an older car with more miles, you know what we're talking about. It's, I would imagine some of you have probably had the top fly open at highway speeds. Yeah, it, it gets exciting in a hurry and you don't know why. <laughs> so um, the last thing that we wanna cover is more quality of life modifications, things that you may not even really think about every time you drive the car, because once you modify your car in such a way, they just kind of change the nature of the vehicle and subconsciously you're like, oh, this is great, I love my Miata. And then these things actually are what's making the difference because it used to be, you know, rattly, it used to be noisy, it used to be whatever, and now it's just inherently better because of this modification. So my, one of my favorites um, on stuff that's kind of invisible modifications is putting some sound deadening in the, uh, in the doors. Mm -hmm. It's the sound um, of the doors because they're just big hollow metal panels. It has that loud boom kind of tone to it, especially when you close the door. Getting rid of that boominess and especially at highway speeds, if you've ever driven, especially NA NB Miatas, there's not a lot of insulation in your doors. Adding that insulation gives it just more solid noise. And then at highway speeds, you just don't have that reverberation of that metal like a top drum head, basically. Mm -hmm. So great, great modification, even for the, the later cars, because they still, they're not Mercedes. You know, Mazda didn't build them to be Cadillacs. So a little bit more insulation is a nice creature comfort, especially if you drive long distances in these cars. Yeah, even on the newer ones, they can benefit greatly from just adding some extra noise or sound deadening on the floor panels. Um, anything you can do to reduce that wind noise or driving fatigue while you're driving your car around, especially for someone who takes uh, long drives or even road trips in your Miata. Um, all those things can kind of help improve that driving experience over that long period each day and just make you a lot happier to get into the car uh, and not be uh, fatigued by the end of the drive. Um, I'll take an easy one if you don't mind. Go for it. And, and I'll plug a product. So you probably heard us all talk about door bushings over and over and over, and I'm sorry. We love them. They're amazing. They're two bolts aside, super easy to install. Another one of those, just like the, I was talking about the door going kathunk. It just makes the door so much more solid. It doesn't rattle around. It doesn't move, again, with the NA and B owners, but even a little bit with the NCs and NDs if you drive a lot of miles. If you want to reduce the amount of squeaks and rattles and bumps that you hear, and maybe you don't even subconsciously know that it's coming from your door, once you install the door bushings, that stuff stops moving around, it stops rattling, it stops bumping, and it's just like, my car is quiet. It's a convertible, what's going on? <laughs> it makes a big difference, bigger than you might think. So, especially for the, the cars that have a lot of miles on them, it's a super modification. It takes about five minutes to install. Super easy, well worth it in my book. Yep, I installed a set of door bushings. I didn't really even realize my doors were rattling that much. Uh, but once I put them in, I drove down a rough road and was amazed. It was a much more peaceful drive, even on a rough gravel road. It's definitely a big improvement. Um, another uh, uh, item that is kind of overlooked a lot is the, the on my personal uh, NB Miata and with the NAs as well, is the washer nozzles. Um, they just don't spray very accurately towards the windshield. They're kind of useless. Um, we have a, a washer nozzle kit that makes them spray a little bit higher up on the windshield and just you can get the windshield clean a lot easier from all the bugs as you're driving past your favorite river or a body of water if, you live, if you're lucky enough to live on the ocean. Um, just a great quality of life upgrade that you don't necessarily think about, but whenever you do need them, uh, it's a big, big improvement. And I don't see Brandon. He's probably hiding right now. Uh, but one of the things, oh, there he is. I harp on Brandon all the time for his cars and for ours. Um, and if you see ours now with the hoods open with those awesome hood props, it's because I, yep, thanks Brandon, he's demoing for us. <laughs> it's because I uh, bugged the crap out of him to install them on all of our cars because they're so convenient to have. If you're ever doing maintenance on your engine bay and you're like reaching around that stupid hood prop, you'll know, anybody who's worked under their hood will know, if you have to fight that hood prop, it's so frustrating getting a good hood prop kit, so that way it's out of the way, the stock hood prop, use it for roasting marshmallows over a campfire, whatever, get it out of there. It is a super convenient modification, I love it. Another one of those things that, I don't care if your engine bay is stock, 
if you do your own maintenance, save yourself the hassle. Don't bite the hood prop. Just get the hood lift kit. Easy, easy win. No more touching a hood prop that's incredibly hot to the touch after an autocross session either, which I saw that several is... people struggling with yesterday, and I did last month when I was in my car. Great point, <laughs> yeah. I forgot about that. I haven't had a hood prop on my cars forever, so I don't even know the pain anymore. I forgot. <laughs> oh. Um, uh, another uh, uh, thing, this one's also a bit more NA and NB specific, but that uh, removing that, that little brace that's on the bottom side of the intake manifold and prevents access to everything down on the passenger side of the engine block. Getting rid of that, we haven't seen any real downsides to removing that, and it just improves your access, allows you to reach your oil filter without having to crawl around underneath the car um, or get to anything on the back side of the alternator. Um, anything else on that side of the engine just makes it a lot easier to see if you're looking for oil leaks or anything else. Um, it's an easy thing to do. It's only two or three bolts, three bolts. Uh, very easy to remove, uh, no downside to removing it, a little bit of weight savings even, uh, and ease of maintenance is absolutely worth the trouble. Yep, I agree. Okay, so we blathered on and on and on. Uh, Solomon, stop yawning. <laughs> no, it's okay. So you've heard our opinions, and I'm sure uh, we could go on. I won't do it because I know you guys are ready. I'd like to hear what modifications do you think it's worth it? Does anybody have a modification they've done that they think is worthwhile? Chris? Motor mounts. Motor mounts? Motor mounts. Good point. Excellent Especially, point. well, and he's got an NA for those of you that haven't seen it. <laughs> NAs and NBs, when their uh, motor mounts go, they just rip in half. And you may not see it right away, but your engine is just moving around. You miss shifts all the time. It's annoying. Doing new engine mounts, great suggestion. Caleb? Oh, Caleb says differential bushings. Yes, that's another kind of NA, NB thing. NCs and D owners, you probably don't even have to worry about that, Red. They're, they're usually okay. Uh, Rick? Horn. A horn? It's the only modification I've done to my car in six years. It's all stock. <laughs> so the question is, do you have the, the Hellas up in your grill like the Subaru guys do? <laughs> Ah, uh, oh, so that's yours out there with the big horn under the hood. Yeah, nice. so for, for those of you in Facebook land that hadn't heard it, he mentioned upgrading your horns. And I totally agree. You you know, everybody's heard the cute little meep meep that you get out of a Miata. Yeah, you can use a little bit more authority when you're looking to move people out of the way. So an air horn or some kind of high power horn, good idea. Yes, sir. Oh yeah, oh, good yeah. point. That's good an excellent point. And this is better for the NC and ND crowd actually, getting a hard top or other controllers to be able to utilize some of those functions. So if you have one of those cars or ridden in them, um, you have to hold down the button to either put the top down, put the top up, they're slow, and you can only do it below certain speeds, which is a little ridiculous. I think it's like, what, nine miles an hour in the ND and anything about six? Yeah. And you're like, okay, come on, Mazda. It's not a sale. You don't, it's okay. So I think the, the, the one that we have is like up to 30 or 35 miles an hour, something yep. like that. You know, come on, let's be reasonable. So yes, excellent. I definitely agree with that. Very good upgrade. Uh, on NC, replacing that uh, factory plastic oh, yeah. Excellent call. Oh, yeah. yeah, so that's a reliability upgrade replace the coolant overflow in the NC. And this really goes for any of the older generation Miatas, but especially the NC where that is part of the cooling system. It's a pressurized coolant overflow. Mm -hmm. So yeah, very good suggestion. Yes, sir. Exactly. Yep. Yeah, and just to just to repeat that, he's talking about a daylight saving or not daylight savings, <laughs> daylight running light <laughs> module uh, for his ND, so that way you can have a bit more safety. Because unfortunately, for those of us in the U.S., we didn't get daylight or daytime running lights on our cars. Um, but that is something you can retrofit. It's a great upgrade, especially if you have cool LEDs in your car to show off. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Yep. 
for safety. And, and I think this looks cool too. I agree. Helps the shape of the headlight kind of fill out a little bit. Mm -hmm. Yep. Great one. All right. Anybody else? Favorite modifications? Caleb again. Oh, we did. Oh, did you talk about that? Nope. We have it written down hey. and we skipped right over it. That's oh, excellent. Call. Yeah. The, 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 he's uh, talking about a custom Revlinder gauges. Um, and anything, it's another little interior piece that you can just hop in the car and be happy to look at each time. Definitely, definitely a big upgrade. Yeah, and if you haven't seen, check out revlimiter.net. Adam Wolf, super awesome guy. Adam, if you're watching, kudos to you, man. They are awesome custom gauges, and he even has some options where you can flip your gauges or kind of rotate your gauges, so that way if you've got a small diameter steering wheel, you can still see the part of the tachometer and speedometer that you actively use if you have a smaller steering wheel. So super awesome, really changes the feel of the interior without really changing much of the interior as far as like what you touch, mm -hmm. but just seeing it visually, of course, you're looking at your speedo and your gauges all the time. So great upgrade, good suggestion. All right, anyone else? Maggie, what did you do, Maggie? I love you. <laughs> I love you too, Maggie. <laughs> All right. So I don't know. In the back. Oh, oh pedals. That's yeah. another good suggestion. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So if you are the, one of those that likes to do heel toe, even on the street, uh, guilty. Getting a good pedal cover kit and or an extension for your gas pedal to make that heel toe action a little easier. Uh, another great upgrade. Easy, easy. Um, depends on the kind of shoes that you wear too. If you've got big white shoes, it may not matter as much. But if you like wearing smaller shoes, or if you do uh, racing shoes everywhere, wherever Matt ran off to, then that's a great <laughs> upgrade. That way you can give it just a little bit more of an ease of reach across the pedals. Yeah, perfect. All right. Um, Mr. Kyle, do we have any suggestions from Facebook World? No, they're quiet. Oh, okay. I put them asleep. <laughs> oh. yeah. One right there. Yes, sir. Yeah, do you have one that like plugs into the cup holder slots? Exactly. Oh, that's so handy. Yeah, the NDs, all the ND owners, if you've ever tried to find a place to set your phone, you'll know the pain because um, it's either, well, maybe my phone fits in the cup holder. Nope, it's too big. Uh, well, I can put it here in front of the shifter. Nope, it's too big. Uh, hmm. So yeah, there, is it a 3D printed one or aftermarket somewhere that you bought? Uh, aftermarket. Yeah. yeah, there are some out there. I've seen a few different options that are 3D printed or just, you know, custom formed. But yeah, a phone holder that fits in the, the factory cup holder position. Very nice. The NDs, they're great, but all your storage is like behind you. It's an awkward reach. So there are some good aftermarket mods for that stuff. Chris? Address speakers and speaker updates. Yes. So especially in the older Miatas, if you've got an NA and you have blown speakers, uh, this is true for anybody, but if you've got blown out factory speakers, especially the NAs with the headrest speakers, um, I don't know that I've come across any ND owners with headrest speakers that are blown out yet, fortunately. But yeah, upgrading your speakers, big difference. Again, with like the Bluetooth head unit, you know, that's a good combo pairing. Replace speakers and your head unit. Mm -hmm. We have a Facebook land question or suggestion. Suggestion. Uh, their favorite mod is ITVs. ITVs? Yeah. Hey, I saw one this morning. Who's got ITVs here? Yes, we do have an ITV driver here. Awesome. Um, What's that, Olin? What's an ITV? ITV is individual or independent throttle bodies. Um, it is definitely a fun thing. It makes a cool honking so sound. If you've never heard one, look up a video on YouTube. It, it sounds cool. Or, or you can ask this gentleman back here, and he'll, he'll probably rev it up for you. I heard that it runs better at elevation now. No? Oh, it isn't? OK, awesome. excellent. Yeah, it's not very common because you have to do a lot of additional tuning. Yeah, but it is cool, um, especially race car. It sounds very race car. It's cool. Yeah, good point. So, yeah, changing your transmission fluid makes a big difference if you got just either old, you know, it's got lots of contaminants in it, or if it's just like a generic off the shelf, not really 
you know, synthetic fluid or whatever the case is. <laughs> yep. You know, there's there are good options out there like Redline. Of course, we're big fans. Uh, a lot of people really like the Ford Motorcraft stuff. Uh, unicorn tears, I think, is what people call it. Yep. So. Mm -hmm. At the dealer? I just called the dealer and was like, yeah, come over in five minutes and pick it up. Yeah. <laughs> I've heard good things about it. I haven't tried it myself, but I have heard a lot of good things. So, yes, transmission fluid. And really, anybody, if you haven't changed out your transmission or dip fluid or don't know when it was changed, just do it. It's cheap. It's easy. It'll save your transmission or at least reduce a lot of the wear on the gears. So, good, easy mod. I have a question about the chassis Mm-hmm. Gotcha. Okay, so just a clarify question was, I mentioned bracing for uh, suspension mods earlier, and why do I think that that's a worthwhile modification specifically for ride quality? And it does help with performance too, of course. Um, a lot of people are more about the performance end of it, but from a ride quality standpoint, it does make a big difference because instead of, especially NAs and NVs, I'm sorry I'm picking on you guys, but those cars, they're inherently more flexible and the chassis will tweak a bit more when you hit big bumps and potholes and stuff like that. So rather than letting the chassis absorb all of that twist and that force, when you stiffen or brace your car, it forces the, sus the suspension to make up that difference. It's a, it, that suspension has to move rather than the chassis moving and flexing you around. The suspension is moving around you. So. Uh, it is a good performance thing. I love it for that. But from a just quality of life and comfort every day, doing chassis bracing for your car can be a big upgrade. And as far as like suggestions for which ones would be a good idea to do, uh, it depends on the car. Generally speaking, a brace that ties the left side to the right side that's as low as you can get, such as like our frame rails butterfly brace, or even a roll bar that goes all the way from left to right, is a great option to do a lot of good in your car to really brace and bring the left and the right sides together and reduce that kind of twisting motion that you can get out of convertibles because they're missing that big solid section of a roof that other cars have. Steven. Um, I put a luggage rack on my car about 10 years ago. It's the yellow car out there. Somebody else is here with a 2013 Miata. I think yep. it's uh, MC. Mm -hmm. It also fits perfectly on that car, too. Yeah. And I installed it myself. It's never moved. It's never scratched the paint on the uh, lid of the trunk. But uh, when I put it on for this trip, I have a full-size spare car, spare tire that rides on that thing. And there's also enough room for a small suitcase. But, right. Uh, I like having a full-size spare tire. Yeah. You want to take that one? Yeah, that definitely. Uh, having some extra space, especially if you're the kind of person who's able to take long road trips or even just longer drives in the Miata. That'd be the suggestion, too. Oh, sorry. Uh, he, he's mentioning a luggage rack that goes over the top of the trunk on the back of his car. Uh, definitely gives you a little bit more storage space, since we all know the trunks in these cars are rather limited in size. Uh, he mentioned specifically being able to carry a full-size spare tire. Um, certainly a big advantage. Uh, I'm sure all of us have had to wait for AAA on the side of the road for hours at a time, uh, maybe more than once. <laughs> Uh, so definitely having uh, a spare full-size tire, definitely a big plus, or being able to take a little bit more luggage if you have somebody driving in the car with you, uh, another big plus for any kind of trip. Excellent. Okay, any other suggestions? Oh, one more. Stephen. I, I should mention I left the full-size spare tire in the hotel room. <laughs> <laughs> I gave me donut in there in uh, case if I get a flat tire in town. You didn't think that you'd get a flat tire between the hotel and our shop? <laughs> they're, they're working on the roads out there. They're, they're getting there, but they're a little bumpy at the moment. Are there any good cup holders for NA and B? Um, yes, there's a few options out there. There's one that Moss Miata, off, or no, let's see, they carry it, but I think it's by IL Motorsport. Yep. It's like a replacement center console. Mm -hmm. So that's an option. I yeah. Right yeah, go see Chris's car after the the seminar. There are some 3D printed ones I've seen people selling online as well. Um, the, the most popular thing I've seen actually recently is to delete the cup holders and the, the center console altogether. Mm -hmm. I think people just like the, the more Spartan interior as well sometimes. But um, 
yeah, there's there's some aftermarket options that uh, I've tried out a few, but it kind of boils down to personal preference. I've seen a few actually trick options that they have a like a phone holder built into the cup holder that you just clip into the factory center console. Mm -hmm. It's pretty trick. Yep. I saw another hand back here somewhere. Yes. Interesting. So he's mentioning the kind of smoked uh, interior light housing, I think on the NA and NB specifically, uh, where it's a kind of darker and not perfectly clear from the factory. And he's talking about replacing it with a Mitsubishi unit that is fully clear uh, and helps brighten the interior up, uh, especially when you're getting in and out of the car at night. And uh, yeah, that's definitely a big plus. It would go even better with an LED bulb in that clear housing would help brighten it up even further. It wouldn't happen to be from an eclipse, would it? Oh, okay. okay. X model Mitsubishi. Okay. <laughs> See Noah for more questions. Oh. All right. Any others? Any other favorite modifications that you've done? Travis, what's your favorite mod? Which one? Carbon fiber? All the carbon fiber. Carbon fiber, all the things. Or the wheels. Most recently, the wheels and tires. There's ultra light towards the wheels. It's super sticky. Yeah. So much fun. Yeah. Travis has got new toys on his car. Go take a look at those tubus. They are sexy. Yes, they are. All right. Well, I think, unless there's any other suggestions. Yeah, oh, one, one more other over there. Okay. Let's do one more. Those are the best kind of mods. Easy, cheap, and reversible. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so he was mentioning putting vinyl stripes or decals on your car, and I agree. It's an easy way to change up the look of your car, kind of like when I was talking about wheels, um, but even cheaper. So vinyl stripes, try it out. If you don't like it, peel them off, try something else. Mm -hmm. Maybe you want hot rod flames, I don't know. <laughs> so super easy mod, yeah, I totally agree. It makes it look, also, if you're looking for a more classic feel, it's easy to do some nice stripes right down the center of the car, or maybe do some classic, you know, kind of pinstriping down the side. There's good options out there if you're looking to change the feel of the car without doing anything dramatic. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, so, uh, 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 Terry, you rule breaker. Yeah, you rule breaker. So you got the smoke side lights are good, I like those. Mm -hmm. How about the sequential turn signals? You still have those? Oh, those we do, yeah. So Terry's talking about the side lights or corner lights that we have that are LED. We also have some that are both clear and smoked, and we have some that are sequential or just flashers. So we have all kinds of options. Again, if you want to talk LEDs, come see me. I would talk your ear off. But yes, we have lots of options. That's a great mod too. All right, we're gonna end it there. Thank you, thank you for your attention. We sure appreciate it. Hopefully, you got some ideas. Um, again, if you don't want your ears, I will talk them out for you. Come see me about LEDs. But otherwise, we will see you again for the next seminar where Brandon will be talking about all the shiny, shiny new projects. So thank you again. We sure appreciate it. And come see us. We'll answer all questions. Thank you, guys. Oh, I have one announcement also. I'm sorry. Tammy has reminded me that if you have not picked up your registration packet and your T-shirts, please go see Tammy. Tammy, raise your hands. This is Tammy. Hi, Tammy. So if you, if you don't have your t-shirt, the gray ones that we get with summer camp, please go see Tammy. She'll get you hooked up. Thank you. Thanks, guys.